Look at these two X-rays. Can you interpret the X-rays and spot the findings in these X-rays? If not, you have come to the right video. In this video, I will be talking about how to interpret a chest X-ray from the basics. By the end of this video, if you watch this video, I am sure you will be able to spot the findings in these two X-rays. A chest X-ray can give so much information in 2 to 3 minutes of interpreting it than a clinical chest examination done taking 10 to 15 minutes. Hence, it has developed into an integral and vital part of clinical medicine. For the evaluation of chest X-ray, we should look at these three important things. The first one is patient particulars. The second one is technical factors. And third one is the main interpretation part. In patient particulars, we should note the name, the site, and the date of examination. Name holds importance in giving identity to the chest X-ray. We should then check for the side. The L marking should be on the left side. The heart lies towards the L marking. Sometimes when the heart lies in the opposite side, it may be a case of dextrocardia or situs inversus. The date of the examination, if provided, should also always be checked. I have seen people interpreting old x-rays of pneumonia and prescribing antibiotics when in fact it had already been resolved just because they forget to check the date of the x-ray. Next step is to identify the difference in between the posterior anterior view from the anterior posterior view. PA is the standard view of x-ray and is done in day-to-day -day practice. For PA view to be done, patients should be able to stand up. AP view is done in case of supine patients when the patients are bedridden and the patient is unable to stand up. In anterior posterior view, the lung fields appear smaller than in the posterior anterior view. So some parts of the lung fields may be obscured in the anterior posterior view. Hence, PA view is called the standard view. The hot shadow is also magnified in the anterior posterior view. So some findings adjacent to the heart and behind the heart may be missed in the anterior posterior view. However, it is important in bedridden patients. To differentiate anterior posterior view from posterior anterior view, we should look at the bones and the heart. The clavicle will be horizontal in anterior posterior view but will be slightly oblique in the posterior anterior view. The ribs will be oblique in the posterior anterior view and the ribs will be horizontal in the anterior posterior view. The scapula will be projected outside the chest in the posterior anterior view, but the scapula is projected within the lung fields in the anterior posterior view. The heart size is minimized in the posterior anterior view, but the heart size is maximized and enlarged in the anterior posterior view. This differentiation is important because if we are unable to differentiate PA from AP view, we may come to a false diagnosis of cardiomegaly in AP view, which in fact is due to anterior posterior projection. After patient particulars and differentiating the views, then we come to technical factors. Technical factors are those factors that may influence the appearance of X-ray. In technical factors, we should look at these three things, exposure, degree of inspiration, and rotation. I will be discussing how these technical factors may influence interpretation of the X-ray. First is exposure. Exposure means the amount of X-ray that has been given to the patient. In optimally exposed X-rays, 7 to 8 intervertebral discs should be visible. This is an optimally exposed X-ray and we can see the intervertebral discs are visualized till 7 to 8th levels. Bronchovascular markings should be well visualized. We can see these are the bronchovascular markings which are radiating from the hilar region of the lungs and we can see they are well visualized in the X-ray. X-ray should neither be too dark nor too white. This is an overexposed X-ray and it appears too dark. This is an underexposed X-ray and it appears too white. In too dark X-ray, we, can, we cannot see the bronchovascular markings and the morphology of the spines will be well visualized. In too white X-rays, all the lung fields will be very white and the intervertebral discs will not be visualized. 
when the x-ray is too dark it may mimic pneumothorax and when the x-ray is too bright it may mimic infiltrative lung pathologies so the x-ray should have adequate exposure next factor is to look at the degree of inspiration if the inspiration is adequate the 6 to 7 anterior ribs and 9 to 10 posterior ribs should be visible these oblique ones are the anterior ribs and we can see that six anterior ribs are visible in this x-ray these horizontal ones are the posterior ribs and we can see that 9 to 10 posterior ribs are visible in this x-ray when the inspiration is not adequate the costophonic angles may appear blunted and it may mimic pleural effusion this x-ray is an expiratory x-ray and we can see that there is blunting of the costophonic angle which has mimicked pleural effusion but when the patient was asked for adequate inspiration we can see that the costophonic angles are not blunted and are sharp and there is no pleural effusion next factor to consider is rotation there should be no rotation in an optimally centered x-ray which means that the medial end of the clavicle should be equidistant from the spinous process we can trace that this is the middle end of the right clavicle this is the middle end of the left clavicle and this line joins the spinous process of the thoracic vertebras and we can see that this line is equidistant from the middle end of the clavicles when the x-ray is rotated we can see that the trachea is displaced towards the right side the heart also appears displaced towards the right side and the right lung appears smaller than the left lung this may obscure pathologies in the right lung so we should check that there should be no rotation in an x-ray after checking the patient particulars and the technical factors we come to the main portion of evaluation of the chest x-ray we start from center and go towards the periphery we start from the trachea the main bronchi the heart the pulmonary hilum lungs costophrenic angles and diaphragm and the chest wall we should be able to identify the trachea and the main bronchi this lucent structure in the middle is the trachea and it bifurcates into the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus the trachea should have smooth margins it shouldn't be deviated from the midline and the right paratracheal stripe which is opaque area in between the trachea and the right lung should be less than 5 mm in this x-ray we can see that the trachea is deviated towards the left side and there is opacity in the left lung this is a case of left lung collapse and the trachea is pulled towards the left side in this example we can see that the right paratracheal stripe is widened more than 5 mm this is from right paratracheal lymphadenopathy we then come downwards towards the main bronchi and we should be able to see the lucency in the main bronchi there should be no any foreign body or obstruction of the main bronchi thereafter we come down towards the heart we should be able to identify the borders of the heart the right heart border is formed by the right atrium and as we go superiorly this is the superior vena cava the left heart border is formed by the aortic knuckle the pulmonary hilum the left auricle the left ventricle the base of the heart is formed by right and left ventricles then we should be able to evaluate for cardiomegaly cardiomegaly is evaluated by calculating the cardiothoracic ratio to calculate the cardiothoracic ratio we should draw a straight line from the center the maximum distance from the central line to the right heart border is marked by a the maximum distance from the central line to the left heart border is marked by b the maximum thoracic diameter is marked by C. Cardiothoracic ratio is calculated as A plus B divided by C. It is called cardiomegaly when cardiothoracic ratio is greater than 0.5 in case of adults and greater than 0.6 in case of children. After evaluation of the cardiac shadow, we go towards the pulmonary hilum. The pulmonary hilum is the area from where the bronchi and the vessels pass into the lungs. So this is the lungs and these are the bronchi and hilum is this area 
from where the vessels and the bronchi pass into the lungs. In a chest x-ray, the hilum is marked by the intersection of the vessels. Hilum is formed by the intersection of the superior pulmonary vein with the descending pulmonary artery. These vessels are the superior pulmonary veins and this vessel is the descending pulmonary artery. Similarly, in left side, this vessel is the superior pulmonary vein and this vessel is the descending pulmonary artery. The pulmonary hilum is the concave structure formed by intersection of these vessels. So we can see the concave structure in the right side here and the concave structure in the left side here. There are certain rules of the pulmonary hilum. The pulmonary hilum should have concave outer margins. So we can see the concave outer margin in this hilum and in the right hilum. The left hilum is higher than the right side and in few cases they are of equal height. Right hilum is never higher than the left hilum. So we can see that the left hilum is at higher level than the right hilum here. There should be no additional soft tissues in the hilum besides the vessels. So we can see that these structures are the vessels. We can say that these are vessels because they are branching towards the peripheral aspect. We can see that this vessel is branching, this is branching towards the periphery, this is branching towards the periphery. So these are all vessels. There should be no additional structures besides the vessels. This is also a vessel. We can see that this has branches towards the periphery. This is an end on vessel, so it appears dense like a nodule. An end on vessel means the vessel in cross section. So if this is a vessel, if we cut this vessel like this and view the cross section, then this appears like a nodule. And the next rule is that the right descending pulmonary artery should measure less than 15 mm in case of females and less than 16 mm in case of males. This is the right descending pulmonary artery and we measure it here. If the right descending pulmonary artery is enlarged in size, it is a sign of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So in this case, we can see that the right descending pulmonary artery is enlarged in size and we can also appreciate that the pulmonary conus is prominent. So this is a case of pulmonary arterial hypertension. In this case, we can appreciate that the hilar concavity is lost and we can see convexity in the hilum here and convexity in the hilum here. And we can also appreciate that the right paratracheal stripe is thickened more than 5 mm. So this is a case of bilateral hilar and right paratracheal lymph node enlargement. After the hilum, we go towards the lungs. In the lungs, we compare the corresponding side of the lungs. We compare the apex with the apex, the upper zone with the upper zone, the middle with the middle, and the lower zone with the lower zone of the lungs. In an x-ray, lung cannot be separated into lobes because even the upper portion of the lungs may have the lower lobe and the lower portion of the lungs may have the upper lobes. We can see that this is the left lung in lateral view, this is the lower lobe and even the lower lobe can be projected in the x-ray up to the upper portion here. So we separate the lungs into zones and not lobes in an x-ray. To separate the lung into zones, we should look at the anterior ribs. This oblique one is the anterior rib and these horizontal ones are the posterior ribs. When we draw a horizontal line from the lower border of the second anterior rib, the long line above it is the upper zone. When we draw a horizontal line from the lower border of the fourth anterior rib, the long parenchymal lying in between these two lines is the mid zone and the long parenchyma that lies below the second line is the lower zone. Some areas in the lungs may not be easily visualized on first look. We should carefully look at these areas and these are known as the hidden areas. The hidden areas are behind the heart here, in the apical area of the lungs here, below the diaphragm here and behind the ribs and the hyla. For example, if we check at the lungs, we don't see any pathologies in these two lungs. But if we forget to check the hidden areas, we may miss left lower lobe prolapse. 
here we can see opacity behind the heart and this was a case of left lower lobe collapse in another x-ray we can see opacity just beneath the diaphragm here and this was a case of mass in the right lower lung after evaluating the lungs we should look at the costophrenic angles the costophrenic angles should be acute which means that they should be less than 90 degrees in this case we can see that the left costophrenic angle is acute but the right costophrenic angle it is obtuse so this is a case of right pleural effusion we can also appreciate haziness in the right lower zone which signifies pneumonia thereafter we look at the diaphragm we should check if the diaphragm are elevated heart pushes the left diaphragm downwards and the liver pushes the right diaphragm upwards if the left diaphragm is quite high more than 3 cm it is a sign of pathologies the pathologies may be above the diaphragm like lung collapse at the diaphragm like diaphragmatic palsy or below the diaphragm by pushing pushing the diaphragm from ascites or abscess last but not the least is chest wall and bones we should always be careful in evaluating the chest wall and the bones sometimes if we don't look at the bones we may miss important pathologies like metastasis in this case fractures and sometimes masses of the chest so in summary after evaluating the patient particulars we should look for technical factors the penetration should be adequate the chest x-ray should neither be too dark nor too white t7 to t8 intervertebral discs should be well visualized but all of the thoracic vertebral morphology should not be visualized bronchovascular markings should be well visualized in x-ray to check for adequate inspiration the sixth anterior ribs and the 10th posterior ribs should be well visualized if they are not visualized the lower lungs will be obscured there should be no rotation in x-ray otherwise some parts of the lungs may be obscured by the heart to check for proper centering the spinous process should be equidistant from the middle end of the bilateral clavicles thereafter we should go from inwards to outwards we should look at the trachea trachea should be smooth there should be no deviation of the trachea and the right parietal stripe should be less than 5 mm then we look at the main bronchi there should be no any obstruction in the main bronchi we evaluate the borders of the heart and we should check for cardiomegaly thereafter we look at the hilum hilum should be concave there should be no additional soft tissue density in the hilum the left hilum should be higher than the right side then we look at the lungs the lung parenchyma should be evaluated by comparing the corresponding sides and we should also look at the hidden areas then we go to the costophrenic angles which should be acute we should look at the diaphragms and lastly the chest wall and the bones thank you